think we're ready to roll. The candle is lit. And I mean that as an adjective. <laughs> the candle is lit. You know, this chapter, I... Okay, let's just... If you're just joining us, now would be a bad time to join us. Um, I have a feeling this is going to be a weird chapter. This is 2 Samuel 13 through probably 15. Um, we're trying to do a whole Bible read through cover to cover. We're in 2 Samuel, like I said, and I just have a feeling this is going to get uncomfortable, as some of these passages are. But, you know, it's part of the Bible, and since my goal is to read through the whole Bible, it must be read, right? That's logical. Chapter 13, some time passed. David's son Absalom had a beautiful sister whose name was Tamar, and David's son Amnon fell in love with her. Wait, David's son, Absalom, had a sister? It was Tamar. And then David's son, Amnon. I really have to look at their family tree to figure out what's going on here. Okay. Amnon was so tormented that he made himself ill because of his sister, Tamar. So he's in love with his sister. I think. For she was a virgin, and it seemed impossible to Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of David's brother Shinia, Shimia. And Jonadab was a very crafty man. He said to him, O son of the king, why are you so haggard morning after morning? Will you not tell me? Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my, brother's, my brother Absalom's sister. Jonadab said to him, lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill. Okay, this must be the, crafty, the craftiness coming out. Lie down on your bed, pretend to be ill, and when your father comes to see you, say to him, let my sister Tamar come and give me something to eat and prepare the food in my sight so that I may see it and eat it from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill. And when the king came to him, came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please let my sister Tamar come and make a couple cakes in my sight, so that I may eat from her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go to your brother Amnon's house and prepare food for him. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, where he was lying down. She took dough, kneaded it, made cakes in his sight, and baked the cakes. Then she took the pan and set them out before him, but he refused to eat. Amnon said, Send out everyone from me. So everyone went out from him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the chamber so that I may eat from your hand. Oh boy. So Tamar took the cakes she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. But when she brought them near him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come lie with me, my sister. She answered him, No, my brother, do not force me, for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do anything so vile. As for me, where could I carry my shame? And as for you, you would be as one of the scoundrels in Israel. Now therefore I beg you, speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. But he would not listen to her, and being stronger than she, he forced her and lay with her. Well, this is pretty terrible. 15, verse 15, Then Amnon was seized with a great, very great loathing for her. Indeed, his loathing was even greater than the lust he had felt for her. Amnon said to her, Get out. But she said to him, No, my brother, for this, is, for this wrong in sending me away is greater than the other that you did to me. But he would not listen to her. He called the young man who served him and said, Put this woman out of my presence and bolt the door after her. Now she was wearing a long robe with sleeves, for this is how the virgin daughters of the king were clothed in earlier times. So his servant put her out and bolted the door after her. But Tamar put ashes on her head and tore the long robe that she was wearing. She put her hand on her head and went away, crying aloud as she went. Her brother Absalom said to her, Has Amnon, your brother, been with you? 
Be quiet for now, my sister. He is your brother. Do not take this to heart. So Tamar remained a desolate woman in her brother Absalom's house. When King David heard of all these things, he became very angry, but he would not punish his son Amnon because he loved him, for he was his firstborn. But Absalom spoke to Amnon neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had raped his sister Tamar. Verse 23. After two full years, Absalom had sheep shearers at Baal Hazor, which is near Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. Absalom came to the king and said, Your servant has sheep shearers. Will the king and his servants please go with your servant? But the king said to Absalom, No, my son, let us not all go, or else we will be burdensome to you. He pressed him, but he would not go, but gave him his blessing. Then Absalom said, If not, please let my brother Amnon go with us. The king said to him, Why should he go with you? But Absalom pressed him until he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Absalom made a feast like a king's feast. Then Absalom commanded his servants, Watch when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say to you, Strike Amnon, then kill him. Do not be afraid. Have I not myself commanded you? Be courageous and valiant. So the servants of Absalom did to Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons rose, and each mounted his mule and fled. While they were on the way, the report came to David that Absalom had killed all the king's sons, and no, not one of them was left. Wait, I thought only Amnon was going to die. Then, okay, verse 29, Then all the king's sons rose, and each mounted his mule and fled. While they, the king's sons, were on the way, the report came to David that Absalom had killed all the king's sons. Okay, this might just be the report. Absalom had killed all the king's sons, and not one of them was left. The king rose, tore his garments, verse 31, and lay on the ground, and all the servants who were standing by tore their garments. But Jonadab, the son of David's brother Shimea, said, Let not my lord suppose that they have killed all the young men, the king's sons. Amnon alone is dead. This has been determined by Absalom from the day Amnon raped his sister Tamar. Now, therefore, do not let my lord the king take it to heart, as if all the king's sons were dead, for Amnon alone is dead. But Absalom fled. When the young man who kept watch looked up, he saw many young coming, sorry, he saw many people coming from the Horname road by the side of the mountain. Jonadab said to the king, See, the king's sons have come, as your servant said. So it has come about. As soon as he had finished speaking, the king's sons arrived and raised their voices and wept. And the king and all his servants also wept very bitterly. But Absalom fled and went to Talmai, son of Amahud, king of Geshur. David mourned for his son day after day. Absalom, having fled to Geshur, stayed there three years. And the heart of the king went out, yearning for Absalom, for he was now consoled over the death of Amnon. Chapter 14. Now Joab, son of Zariah, perceived that the king's mind was on Absalom. Joab sent to Tekoa and brought from there a wise woman. He said to her, Pretend to be a mourner. Put on mourning garments. Do not anoint yourself with oil, but behave like a woman who has been mourning many days for the dead. Go to the king and speak to him as follows. And Joab put the words into her mouth. When the woman of Tekoa came to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and did obeisance and said, Help, O king. The king asked her, What is your trouble? She answered, Alas, I am a widow. My husband is dead. Your servant had two sons, and they fought with one another in the field. There was no one to part them, and one struck the other and killed him. Now the whole family has risen against your servant. They say, Give up the man who struck his brother, so that we may kill him for the life of his brother whom he murdered, even if we destroy the heir as well. Thus they would quench my one remaining ember and leave to my husband neither name nor remnant on the face of the earth. 
And the king said to the woman, Go to your house, and I will give orders concerning you. The woman of Tekoa said to the king, On me be the guilt, my lord the king, and on my father's house. Let the king and his throne be guiltless. The king said, If anyone says anything to you, bring him to me, and he shall never touch you again. Then she said, Please, may the king keep the Lord your God in mind, so that the avenger of blood may kill no more, and my son not be destroyed. He said, As the Lord lives, not one hair on your son shall fall to the ground. Verse 12, Then the woman said, Please let your servant speak a word to my lord the king. He said, Speak. The woman said, Why then have you planned such a thing against the people of God? For in giving this decision, the king convicts himself inasmuch as the king does not bring his banished one home again. We must all die. We are like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up. But God will not take away a life. He will devise plans so as not to keep an outcast banished forever from his presence. Now I have come to say this to my lord, the king, because the people have made me afraid. Your servant thought, I will speak to the king. It may be that the king will perform the request of, request of his servant, for the king will hear and deliver his servant from the hand of the man who would cut both me and my son off from the heritage of God. Your servant thought, the word of my lord, the king, will set me at rest, for my lord, the king, is like the angel of God, discerning good and evil. The Lord your God be with you. Then the king answered the woman, Do not withhold from me anything I ask of you. The woman said, Let my lord the king speak. The king said, Is the hand of Joab with you in all this? The woman answered and said, As surely as you live, my lord the king, one cannot turn right or left from anything that my lord the king has said, for it was your servant Joab who commanded me. It was he who put all these words into the mouth of your servant. In order to change the course of affairs, your servant Joab did this. But my Lord has wisdom like the wisdom of the angel of God to know all the things that are on the earth. Then the king said to Joab, Very well, I grant this. Go, bring back the young man Absalom. Joab prostrated himself with his face to the ground and did obeisance and the blessed, and blessed the king. And Joab said, Today your servant knows that I have found favor in your sight, my lord the king in that the king has granted the request of his servant. So Joab set off, went to Geshur, and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. The king said, Let him go to his own house. He is not to come into my presence. So Absalom went to his own house and did not come into the king's presence. Verse 25, Now in all Israel there was no one to be praised so much for his beauty as Absalom. For the sole of his foot to the crown of his head there was no blemish in him. When he cut the hair of his head, for at the end of every year he used to cut it, when it was heavy on him, he cut it, he weighed the hair of his head two hundred shekels by the king's weight. There were born to Absalom three sons and one daughter whose name was Tamar. So he named his daughter after his sister, I think. She was a very beautiful woman. So Absalom, verse 28, lived two full years in Jerusalem without coming into the king's presence. Then Absalom sent for Joab to send him to the king, but Joab would not come to him. He sent a second time, but Joab would not come. When he said to his servants, Look, Joab's field is next to mine, and he has, barely there, he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. So Absalom's servant set the field on fire. Then Joab rose and went to Absalom at his house and said to him, Why? Have your servants set my field on fire? Absalom answered Joab, Look, I sent word to you, come here, that I may, may send you to the king with a question. Why have I come from Geshur? It would be better for me to be there still. Now let me go into the king's presence. If there is guilt in me, let him kill me. Then Joab went to the king and told him, and he summoned Absalom. So he came to the king and prostrated himself with his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. Verse 15, which is a fairly long chapter. Verse 15, or chapter 15. After this, Absalom got himself a chariot and horses and 50 men to run ahead of him. Absalom used, used to rise early and stand beside the road into the gate. And when anyone brought a suit before the king for judgment, Absalom would call out and say, From what city are you? When the person said, Your servant is of such and such tribe, 
And Israel, Absalom would say, see, your claims are good and right, but there's no one de deputed, deputed by the king to hear you. Absalom said, moreover, if only I were judge in the land, then all who had a suit or cause might come to me, then I would give them justice. Whenever people came near to do obeisance to him, he would put out his hand and take hold of them and kiss them. Thus Absalom did to every Israelite who came to the king for judgment, so Absalom stole the hearts of the people of Israel. At the end of four years, Absalom said to the king, Please let me go to Hebron and pay the vow that I have made to the Lord. For your servant made a vow while I lived in Geshur, in Aram. If the Lord will indeed bring me back to Jerusalem, then I will worship the Lord in Hebron. The king said to him, Go in peace. So he got up and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent secret messengers throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then shout, Absalom has become king at Hebron. Two hundred men from Jerusalem went with Absalom. They were invited guests, and they went in their innocence, knowing nothing of the matter. While Absalom was offering the sacrifices he sent for Ahithophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor, from his city Gilo, the conspiracy grew in strength, and the people with Absalom kept increasing. Verse 13. A messenger came to David, saying, The hearts of the Israelites have gone after Absalom. Then David said to all his officials who were with him at Jerusalem, Get up, let us flee, or there will be no escape for us from Absalom. Hurry, or he will soon overtake us and bring disaster down upon us and attack the city with the edge of the sword. The king's officials said to the king, Your servants are ready to do whatever our lord the king decides. So the king left followed by all his household except ten concubines whom he left behind to look after the house. The king left, followed by all the people, and they stopped at the last house. All his officials passed by him, and the Cherethites and all the Pelethites and all the six hundred Giddites who had followed him from Gath passed on before the king. Then the king said to Ittai the Gittite, Why are you also coming with us? Go back and stay with the king. For you are a foreigner and also an exile from your home. You came only yesterday, and shall I today make you wander about with us while I go wherever I can? Go back and take your kinsfolk with you, and may the Lord show steadfast love and faithfulness to you. But Ittai answered the king, As the Lord lives and as my Lord the king lives, wherever my Lord the king may be, wherever that for death or for life, there also your servant will be. David said to Ittai, Go then, march on. So Ittai the Gittite marched on with all his men and all the little ones who were with him. The whole country wept aloud as all the people passed by. The king crossed the Wadi Kidron, and all the people moved on toward the wilderness. Verse 24. Abathar came up, and Zadok also with all the Levites carrying the Ark of the Covenant of God. They set down the Ark of God until the people had passed, had all passed out of the city. Then the king said to Zadok, Carry the ark of God back into the city. If I find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me back and let me see both it and the place where it stays. But if he says, I take no pleasure in you, here I am, let him do to me what seems good to him. The king also said to the priest Zadok, Look, go back to the city in peace, you and Abathar, with your two sons, Ahimaz your son, and Jonathan son of Abathar, See, I will wait at the fords of the wilderness until word comes from you to inform me. So Zadok and Abathar carried the ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they remained there. But David went up the ascent of, Mount, of the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went, with his head covered and walking barefoot. And all the people who were with him covered their heads and went up, weeping as they went. David was told that Ahithophel was among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray you, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. When David came to the summit where God was worshipped, Hushai the archite came to meet with him with his coat torn and earth on his head. David said to him, If you go on with me, you will be a burden to me. But if you return to the city and say to Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, as I have been your father's servant in time past. So now I will be your servant. Then you will defeat for me the counsel of Ahithophel. 
The priests Zadok and Abathar will be with you there. So whatever you hear from the king's house, tell it to the priests Zadok and Abathar. Their two sons are with them there, Zadok's son Ahimez and Abathar's son Jonathan. And by them you shall report to me everything you hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city just as Absalom was entering Jerusalem. Times are messed up for David's family, but I believe this was foretold because of David's error, his sin, so that his family would be messed up. And we're kind of seeing that now. Thanks for joining me today. This is a little bit of a difficult read. Start off kind of funky and then... Um, just sometimes the narrative is a little bit clunky for me. To, it might be the translation. It's a little bit clunky for me to read at times, but we're powering through Second Samuel. We'll continue on next time. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a good day, and I will see you next time.